Warning, the following video has not been approved by the Comic Code Authority and is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. What is up, everybody? This is Drewski, the comic assassin. And today I just want to take a little bit of time and do a little bit of a comic book review on two books I was able to pick up this past Wednesday. Just a little bit of news. Um, I won't go too much in depth because that's what the Monday video is for. More for the news and talking about more of the, the, the whole load we picked up last week and what's coming out this next week. But there were two books that came out this past week that I really wish I would have been able to pick up. And both of them are kind of my fault. Um, the first one was Canto, number one. I've heard that it was a good read, and my local comic book shop actually had, I think, three copies. But they were all severely damaged. The, the covers were all wrinkled up. It looked like something had happened in the printing process. And after doing some review on, on the, the internet, I uh, found out that a lot of people got damaged copies. So if you were lucky enough to get one of those books undamaged, good for you and if you read it let me know let me know if it was actually a good book I'm just kind of going on a few people's opinions you might have read it and not liked it so I'd like to know what you think about that book <laughs> the second one was Marvel Comics Presents number six and once again there was multiple copies at my lo local comic book shop and I actually had someone come up and say hey man you need to pick up this book and I was like why and they were like oh it's the first appearance of Wolverine's daughter <sighs> My initial thoughts was, oh, another one? I mean, what, what are we up to now? 24, 25, somewhere in that realm. And most of them are dead anyway, by his hands, for, for the most part. So, and to give him some credit, most of them were clones. You can't really blame the guy for not knowing, but well, that's neither here nor there. But that, with that being said, and knowing that Hickman's about to come in and revamp the whole X-Men stuff... You just don't know if this is a character that is going to make it to those story arcs, if she even survives that long in the first place. So my gut reaction was, eh, I'm going to pass on it. But I kind of wish I didn't, because now the book's going for 20, 25 bucks on Feebay, so I would have much rather have paid cover price for a book if it, did, if it ends up having some long-term potential. But what are you going to do? I mean, that's what happens. Sometimes you miss them. Sometimes you get them, so who knows. So I'm going to talk about two books specifically today that we I was able to pick up on Wednesday. And just know, I was raised a Marvel guy. I'm still a Marvel guy. You know, I grew up reading Spidey, X-Men, and that's kind of what I always gravitated to. Um, I read a few DC stuff, uh, but I was never really exposed to some of the smaller publishers or some of the indie books. And so when I do these reviews, I'm going to try to highlight more of the, the smaller publisher in some of the indie books, just because it is something that I have started reading a lot more of in the last few years, and there's a lot of good stuff out there. So with that said, my first one is going to be Dark Red number four. Um, this is an Aftershock book. Now, Aftershock's been doing some good stuff. Um, it's kind of funny, when I was looking at their titles, I was looking and said, oh, I kind of gravitate to more of their horror titles. So, uh, A Walk Through Hell, that's a good read. This is a good read. Baby Teeth, love Baby Teeth. Uh, what's the other one? Pestilence. I love the Pestilence story arcs. So I tend to gravitate more towards their horror titles, but they have a lot of other titles other than horror. So I think they're doing some good stuff over there at Aftershock. But Dark Red number four, and I have talked about Dark Red in some of my previous videos. Um, once again, there's going to be some minor spoilers, just so you know what's going on in this book. And maybe it'll help you make the decision if this is something you want to add to your pool list. Or just check out some of the back issues. You know? It's a vampire book. Um, and basically, the main character, Chip, which is this guy, he's a vampire, been a vampire for... A few decades. Uh, he was actually turned in World War One. I'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. But what I like about this is that Chip 
there, there's definitely some symbolism in this book. Basically, Chip is a vampire who lives in the middle of America, trying to make it an honest living. All right, he works as a janitor at a convenience store. He hasn't used his vampire powers to, to get him fame and glory or anything like that. He wants to make it with his own two hands. All right. So he's a hard-working vampire American, <laughs> okay? Um, and I like that. I think that's a, it's a, it's a cool spin on this book. So Chip has decided he tries not to kill anybody. And he actually has a very convenient mutual relationship with this female who has this disorder where she produces too many red blood cells. So if she's not bled out, she actually will start bleeding out all you know on its own so they kind of have this mutual relationship where he gets to feed she's getting her disorder kind of under control so that's a very interesting concept to me and he's got a territory so I guess you, you have it you can have a March territory in this story arc of, of vampires so he has his own March territory but one day these people come in and like oh hey we know you're in your territory but we like what you're doing and um, we want to come out into the public we want the vampires to be known to the world and we want you to be the face of of this movement now we'll run stuff but we want you to be the face because you're the hard-working american you can identify with the common folk and he's kind of like yeah, i mean i don't really know like i don't really like this idea well, then he finds out that they're Nazis. All right, and Chip hates fucking Nazis. Go figure. Who would have known? All right, and that's when it kind of gets into the storyline of his origin, where he was actually fighting in World War One. He ends up getting sick, and I think it was a... I don't know if she was French or not, but anyway, this, this woman, this young girl, actually changes him because she knows that he is a soldier. And she wants him to help take out these Nazis because apparently the Nazis were doing these experiments on vampires, exterminating them, and even the vampires viewed, or at least that vampire viewed the Nazis as a threat. So once he finds out that this guy's a Nazi, he goes ballistic ends up killing the guy and now the story is kind of where this whole troop of Nazi vampires are coming in and trying to take revenge are still trying to further their agenda um, they ended up kidnapping the girl who Chip feeds on and there's actually a good panel scene of, of that let me Uh, well, I can't find the top of head. But anyway, so now they have her. There's two, um, I'll just say, country men um, that aren't vampires that finally have just now learned Chip's true self. They're trying to help find Evie, who's the, the chick in this story. But it ends up with this. So basically, here we go. This is now the woman who's kind of leading the, the charge and she's talking about how vampirism for pure whites only so yeah some Nazi Nazi vampire stuff so I'm really digging the story I, I think you should check it out if, if you're kind of into that type of thing because I've really really been been liking it the next one is Punk Mambo number three this is honestly probably the only Valiant books that I'm picking up right now. Once again, I never really got into a lot of Valiant stuff before. And what's interesting is I honestly have never really gotten into a lot of solo female characters. And just because a lot of them don't really appeal to me. I just, just you know, nothing I have wrong with female characters. I just it never really appealed to me. So when I gave this one a chance, I kind of went into it a little hesitantly. But I'm glad I did because I'm digging this book. It is a Cullen Bunn book, and you can tell he's kind of done his research on the topics that are within this book. 
So basically, Puck Mambo right here. She's a voodoo priestess from London. I don't know if she's immortal, but she's been around for a long time. She looks young, but she's not that young. And she has a lot of magical abilities, um, especially when it comes to the voodoo world. So basically what happens with this storyline is she is... For, originally she's freeing some people that she knows from these... I don't know what you would call them in the bo boonies of Louisiana and she has what's called a loa. Now a loa is not necessarily a god in the voodoo realm it's more of something that they will pray to and try to harness the powers of like you might have a this one represents death this one represents luck and there's a whole long list of them. Anyway she has a loa that helps her fight and it gets kidnapped so now she's pissed off she's like what the hell happened to my loa and I'm gonna go find out. Well anyway, her search takes her all the way to Haiti. Go figure, with voodoo, right? And basically she is greeted by a bunch of other Loas and they're like, we need you to help us out because some other being is kidnapping, taking away Loas. And she's like, first off, I'm just wanting to find out what happened you know, who invaded my space, you know, so she's reluctantly helping them, but she does it in a way that really pisses this guy off, so this is one of the followers of those uh, those Loas, and he gets all pissed off, he's like, look, you're, you're not respecting, you know, our beliefs, X, Y, and Z, and she's kind of like, hey man, I'm just doing my thing, you can do your thing if you want, and he, he splits, he's like, I can't take this. But she's still on the hunt, and she ends up finding this guy who... So that's a picture of the, some of the Loas right there, some of the beings. She ends up coming across this one guy who... The one with the red eyes. And apparently his mom was a voodoo priestess, and... Based on his backstory, you would think that he'd be loaded with magic, but the only ability that he actually has is that magic cannot be used in his vicinity. So basically it's kind of a setup. So, since she can't use her powers, his men literally beat the hell out of Punk Mambo. She gets away, and, and this is why I really like the character, because she's so, she's so prideful. Like, she was like, I'm not pissed because they attacked me. I'm not pissed because this and that. I'm pissed because they're toying with me. You know, instead of just killing me, they're, they're letting me go, knowing that they can find me later. Like, that's, that's where she comes from. But at the same time, while she's doing the fighting, let's see, the the some of the voodoo followers that were asking for her help get slaughtered. So there's also this character called like Uncle Gunnysack or Mr. Gunnysack, who is kind of like the the Haitian equivalent of of Boogeyman, and so he's the one that's doing a lot of the work but you get the feeling that something deeper is going on someone else might be pulling the strings but like I said this is one that once again I gave it a shot book one was good let's see what happens book two was like okay and book three I enjoy it I really do so those are the two reviews. Like I said, I don't want to do cover and cover and spoil away too much stuff. I just kind of want to give you a little bit of the backstory on some of these books, see if it sparks any interest with you. But anyway, with that being said, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I hope you have a lovely Friday and a lovely weekend. And please look out for the video coming out on Monday. And with that said, happy hunting.